I've been asked so many times how to know whether you find someone visually appealing or whether you're like sexually and potentially romantically attracted to them. We're taught to see most of the kinds of attraction as this one like conglomerate thing that always occurs together. I wish I could do like a number of times I've said attraction counter, but honestly it would like take so much editing because I feel like I've already said it like upwards of 40 times. We live in a society. Why hello there, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tallulah if you did not know, and today we're talking about the five different kinds of attraction. I wanted to make this video because I only really recently found out that there are actually five different kinds of attraction. And I think when we hear the word attraction, we kind of think, okay, there's sexual attraction and romantic attraction. And even lots of people still don't really consider those to be separate things. So when I found out there were five different kinds of attraction, it kind of blew my mind a little bit, but it also made a lot of sense. Not only is breaking down the five different kinds of attraction really useful for understanding your own feelings and your own attractions. And I've definitely found it really interesting and insightful personally but it's also really useful for helping to understand the asexual and aromantic spectrums because as soon as you break attraction down and see that there are lots of different kinds of it, it's much easier to understand the different sexualities and romantic orientations on these spectrums. Before we get into it, I want to stop to say Oh my god, we hit 2,000 subscribers. We hit 2,000 subscribers. That might not seem like a big number to some people, but to me that is mental and I'm so grateful to every single one of you for subscribing and for sticking around and for watching my videos. We're growing a little, we're growing a little thing. We're growing something. If you've never seen my face before, then hello. My name is Tallulah, I drink coffee and I talk about things, so please do subscribe down below for more of this. Also, I'm trying to grow my fringe into curtains, which explains this situation. Bear with me. Once again, we're growing something. So with all of that out of the way, let's get right into the five different kinds of attraction. I think I first came across these ideas in an Ash Hardell video about the ace and aromantic spectrums. It's a brilliant video. It's a two-part series. I will link them down below because they're really educational and they're really great for hearing from lots of different people on the ace and or aromantic spectrums. Those videos are where I first heard about the fact that there were actually five different kinds of attraction and not just sexual and romantic. I've been banging on about the five different kinds, so I'm actually going to list them now. So the five different kinds of attraction are sexual, romantic, platonic, sensual, and aesthetic. Some of these are more obvious than others, so I am going to define all of them just because I think it's handy to start with definitions so that when we start teasing apart what they mean and putting them together and seeing how they fit together for different people, it all makes more sense. Firstly, we have sexual attraction, which is the one I think we're probably most used to hearing about. Sexual attraction is where you're attracted to someone sexually. No shit, Tallulah, that was descriptive. <laughs> but sexual attraction and having sexual attraction towards somebody means you're interested in having a sexual relationship and or experience with that person. Secondly, we have romantic attraction, which is another one we talk about fairly often. If you are romantically attracted to somebody, you are interested in having some kind of romantic relationship with them. Already, we can see that separating sexual and romantic attraction shows that you can be sexually attracted to somebody, but that does not necessarily mean you're romantically attracted to them. And you can be romantically attracted to somebody, but that doesn't necessarily necessarily mean you're sexually attracted to them. Thirdly, we have platonic attraction, which most people probably wouldn't even consider as a type of attraction, but platonic attraction is having a desire to be friends with somebody. I think it's really nice and important to think of platonic attraction as a kind of attraction, because it is. Like, I think we can all look back on times we met people we're now close friends with, people that are important to us in a friend way, and remember thinking that they were really cool or really interesting or kind of intimidating and just like really wanting to be friends with them. Next up, we have sensual attraction, not sexual attraction, sensual attraction. And I think people often conflate this with sexual attraction because lots of people experience the two usually together, but it's important to make the distinction because not everybody does experience them together automatically. So what is sensual attraction? Sensual attraction is a desire to be physically close with somebody in a non-sexual way. So that may mean you want to hold someone's hand, you want to cuddle with somebody, you might like how somebody smells or how it feels to hug somebody. It's, it's a attraction to do with the senses, so it is physical, and to do with like touch and closeness, but it's not sexual. Another thing that comes under the umbrella of sensual attraction, which I find really interesting, is kissing. I think most people would probably associate that more in their heads with like sexual attraction, but kissing is a kind of closeness and physical intimacy that is not necessarily tied to sexual attraction at all. It comes under the kind of umbrella of physical closeness and intimacy that is sensual as opposed to necessarily sexual. And finally, 
finally we've got to the end of the list our fifth kind of attraction which is aesthetic attraction aesthetic attraction is finding someone visually appealing liking how somebody looks finding them aesthetically pleasing similar to sensual attraction aesthetic attraction is often lumped together and thought of in the same category as sexual attraction there's this idea that if you think somebody's visually appealing you must therefore be sexually attracted to somebody but teasing out the different kinds of attraction make it clear that those things are not necessarily linked at all sexual attraction is its specific own category and all it describes is having a desire to have sex with or be sexual with a person and that doesn't necessarily happen as soon as you find someone visually appealing oh my god it's our fucking manic doorbell my uni house has like a really chaotic doorbell it's like a tune but it goes on for like 20 seconds if you want to read more about the definitions i'll leave a couple articles down below but for now i'm going to move on to how these different kinds of attractions fit together for different people depending on how they experience attraction i kind of hinted at this when i was giving the definitions but something that i think is really important to tease out is the perceived relationship between aesthetic sensual romantic and sexual attractions obviously i can't make a sweeping general here about how everybody sees these things as linked but I think it's quite a commonly held view that if you find someone aesthetically attractive that's kind of a prerequisite for a kind of combined sensual and sexual attraction to them. And you can see this when you think about the words that are commonly used to describe people we find aesthetically attractive. When you use words like hot and fit, I feel like it's kind of implied that you also mean sexy. And I think that's why there's this massive like overlap and jumbling together of aesthetic and sexual attraction. Obviously it doesn't come out of nowhere. Like most of the time, if you're sexually attracted to somebody, you are aesthetically attracted to them. But obviously that doesn't mean that aesthetic attraction automatically leads to sexual attraction. I wish I could do like a number of times I've said attraction counter, but honestly it would like take so much editing because I feel like I've already said it like upwards of 40 times. And this distinction between finding somebody nice to look at and wanting to have sex with somebody comes up a lot in conversations about compulsory heterosexuality, right? I think I've touched on this before. I think there's this idea that if you find somebody visually appealing, you must be sexually attracted to them when that is simply not how shit works. Since by and large we're socialized to have exclusively straight attractions, it's a kind of convenient truth and part of that that we're also taught that finding someone visually appealing is the same as finding someone sexually appealing. I've been asked so many times how to know whether you find someone visually appealing or whether you're like sexually and potentially romantically attracted to them. And I think this whole like problem of trying to figure that out would be so much simpler if only people were more educated on the fact that there are more kinds of attraction than just sexual and romantic. But unfortunately, that's not the case because guess what? We live in a society. Also, side note, somebody suggested I make merch with we live in a society on it. I will do it if you want it. <laughs> I feel so bad for my housemates. I'm just like saying sexual attraction over and over and over again. As I said before, sexual attraction is the desire to be sexual with somebody, while sensual attraction is the desire to have other kinds of physical, sensory closeness with somebody, like cuddling, kissing, holding hands, that aren't necessarily sexual at all. I think it's fair to say that most people see these kinds of attraction as intertwined and always connected and always coming as a pair. Lots of people always experience these things together, like if you have a desire to like kiss or cuddle or hold hands with somebody, that's likely somebody you're also sexually attracted to. However, that is not true across the board and it's a really important distinction to make when we come to asexuality and the ace spectrum. There are so many misconceptions about asexual people and people who fall on the asexual spectrum, but I think one of the biggest ones is the idea that not having sexual desire or having sexual desire in a very limited way or only under specific circumstances means that you can't have any other kinds of attraction and therefore you can't be in relationships. But as soon as you learn about the five different kinds of attraction, it becomes really hard to hold up that misconception. It becomes clear that when we say sexual attraction day to day, what we actually mean is sexual romance romantic, sensual, and aesthetic attraction all lumped together. And therefore, if somebody doesn't experience sexual desire, we assume they don't experience any of those kinds of attraction at all, which is clearly untrue, because as soon as you tease the five types out, it becomes clear that they can exist independently of one another and in different combinations for different people and in different situations. Understanding the five different kinds of attraction can really broaden the way we see romantic, sexual, and platonic relationships. So for example, an 
sexual person may be in a relationship that involves romantic attraction, aesthetic attraction, sensual attraction, but just not that sexual attraction. Lots of platonic relationships may have sensual elements, like you might cuddle with your friends or hold hands with your friends, and that doesn't necessarily have any romantic or sexual undertone at all. And I want to plug Ash Hardell's videos on aromantic and asexual identities again, just because I've touched on a couple of things in this video, but those videos were like massively eye-opening to me and really, really useful and comprehensive. Another identity to touch on here that's useful in terms of seeing the different kinds of attraction in action is demisexuality. I would really like to make a whole video about demisexuality because demisexuality is something I really relate to. I'm kind of on the cusp of identifying as demi, like I'm not quite sure and I'm not in any hurry to label myself in any particular way. However, demisexuality is a really good way of understanding the different kinds of attraction and I don't think most people really get what demisexuality is and it's often brushed off as not a real identity. That is something that I think can be tackled by talking about the different kinds of attraction. Demisexuality is an identity on the asexual spectrum and what it means is that you don't experience sexual attraction unless you have a strong bond with the person beforehand. Lots of people immediately brush this off as like, yeah, well, of course you might wanna know the person before you have sex with them. Everybody feels that way. That's stupid, that's not real. But this dismissal comes from the misconception that demisexuals just choose not to have sex with somebody until they know them really well, when that's not what it is at all. Most demisexuals describe being demi as not being able to experience a sexual attraction towards somebody unless and until there is a strong emotional bond there first. So if you look at the different kinds of attraction, that could be a strong platonic bond and or a strong romantic bond. So demisexuality is not just a preference or a choice, it's having a strong bond platonic and or romantic as a prerequisite for experienced sexual attraction at all. I wanted to touch on that because demisexuality definitely isn't something I could like understand fully until I looked at it through the lens of the different kinds of attraction. Because in the way that we're taught to see most of the kinds of attraction as this one like conglomerate thing that always occurs together, it's quite hard to understand attractions where like there are prerequisites, like you need a strong platonic and or romantic bond in order to even feel the sexual attraction. Oh my God, I feel like I've been talking for about 800 years. <laughs> That is everything I wanted to say in this video. I find it super interesting, as you may have been able to tell by the fact that I've just been like TED talking nonstop. I really hope you found this as interesting as I found it, and I hope you got some more insight into the complexities of attraction. I'll link some resources down below in case you wanna learn more about the different kinds of attraction and the different identities, sexualities, and romantic orientations I touched on in this video. Thank you so much for making it to the end of what is likely to be like a medium to long video. Please do like this video down below it really helps me out and you can subscribe to help us get to the next milestone which is like 3,000 subscribers I just even saying that is like I just I, I uh. <laughs> Please do comment down below if you have any thoughts on this, any questions or insights or resources you think might be interesting for me or anybody else in the comments. You can also follow me on my Instagram at it's Tallulah for more of my face. I'm sending you all lots of love and I will see you very soon. Bye! I can't get this angle like it was last time. All aboard the struggle bus, I guess.